OK, question two is all about electrostatics. Um, and you're asked to complete the sentences using the words from the box. So when a plastic rod is rubbed with a, a cloth, the plastic rod gains because there's nothing else on there that the actual plastic rod can gain. Remember, protons can't move. They're right at the center of the atoms. The electrons are the, the negative charges around the outside that are easily lost or gained uh, through charging with friction. After the plastic rod has been rubbed with the cloth, the plastic rod has a, well, it's gained electrons, so it will have a negative charge. Okay, so when a plastic rod is rubbed with a cloth, the plastic rod gains electrons, and after the plastic rod has been rubbed with the cloth, the plastic rod has a negative charge. Now, while the paint spraying is going on in the uh, diagram above, the paint is given the same charge as it leaves the sprayer. So all the droplets have got the same charge. And they've asked you to explain why this is an advantage. Well, if all the paint droplets have got the same charge, then that means that the droplets are going to repel each other. So that's the first key point, that the droplets of paint will repel each other. Now, why do we want that? Well, if the droplets repel each other, then we're going to get a fine spray. And that means that we'll get an even coverage of whatever it is we're spraying, and also that we're not going to waste too much paint because some get, bits get clumped uh, and some bits don't get such a, a coating either. So the paint forms a fine spray and that gives you a thin, even coating uh, of paint. Now the next question says, paint droplets of paint are positively charged. Explain, uh, so the object being painted is given a negative charge. Explain why this is an advantage. So if the paint is attracted to the object, the reason that's an advantage is that, one, you're not going to waste paint. Paint is not going to end up falling on the ground because it's getting attracted to the object. And also, the paint is not just going to get to one part of the object. It's going to get attracted around the sides and the back of the object. So you're going to cover the whole of it, even the bits that are not that easy to reach. So less waste, waste paint and the whole object gets coated. Now, one of the big hazards uh, that we've talked about by which electric charges, electric charges can cause uh, danger is refueling an aeroplane. This is the one that you mentioned in class. Now, this is obviously a danger, not a use. So, what's the problem here? Well, as the fuel goes into the aeroplane, there's going to be friction between the fuel and the pipe that's delivering the fuel to the aeroplane. And that's going to cause the fuel to become charged and also the pipe to become charged as well. So one's going to become positive, one's going to become negative. Now, if that happens, then charges can jump from one to the other and cause a spark. And that spark can ignite the fuel because it's flammable and then there's, there's a risk there and there's explosions and fire. So you've got to give one hazard caused by electrostatic charges, or well, that's refuel an aeroplane and that's the fuel could ignited by a spark. On top of that, uh, how can the hazard be reduced? Well, what we need to do is to remove that build-up of charge on the pipe or in the tank. And the best way to do that is to be able to earth the aeroplane. If the aeroplane is earthed, then no charge will build up. Because as soon as the positive positive charge builds up, then negative electrons will come from the ground to the aeroplane to cancel that out. The negative charge builds up, and that charge will be able to escape to earth 